Organizations around the world are struggling to minimize business disruptions from COVID-19 while navigating new realities. Governments have had to provide billions in relief to citizens. But with more money comes the reality of corruption and corporate malfeasance. The role of auditors has become more important during this time as emergency funds need to be accounted for. Joining me now for this discussion is CEO at the Institute of Internal Auditors South Africa, Julius Mujapilu. Julius, good evening and thank you for your time tonight. What is in the skill set of internal auditors that puts them at a strong position in managing these uncertain times? Well, good evening and thank you for hosting me. I think that we must all agree this is trying times indeed. And this is really a time where we are not only trying to safeguard funds, but we are trying to safeguard human life as well. And it is more critical now that you have individuals with the skill set of internal auditors that are able to create the necessary systems and controls in place to ensure that the legislation that we have and also that the funds that have been allocated are reaching the vulnerable people that they are intended to reach. So the skill of internal audit in ensuring that there is right governance structures, systems, and internal controls is more critical now than the normal systems we talk about that detect fraud and error after it has already happened. We do not have that luxury anymore of detecting these issues after the fact. We need to be on the ground and pick them up in real time. And that is the kind of skill you can only find in internal audit. So d direct and indirect COVID-19 related risk is what we are talking about now as we are adjusting to the new normal. What type of risk are we, are we looking at? This is, this is key. And, and if you look at this, like I said before, the, the financial mismanagement, corruption, that all comes as a package when there is agency in how we are doing things. We are looking at emergency procurement. We are looking at delivering large supplies to very rural areas. So in that case, you really need very skilled people that will be able to ensure that the right systems of internal controls are implemented to ensure the delivery of those supplies to those to whom it is intended to be delivered. And internal auditors bring that kind of a skill, and they would be able to work hand in hand with the management of the entities and government and service delivery officials to ensure that those things are not lost, goods are not lost in the process before they reach their intended beneficiaries. So let's talk then about how internal auditors can bring value to, to government, municipalities uh, and, and other entities as far as uh, uh, giving uh, uh, data, providing data that is backed by, by insight. Yeah, and I think I must also admit that as well as internal auditors, they are also faced with a lot of uh, challenges that they have to deal with in this case. And uh, one of them is the acceleration of adoption of technology in how we do internal audit uh, engagement. Because there isn't that opportunity anymore of having a face-to-face -face engagement with the client and being able to look at supporting documents. So internal auditors are well are grappling well with ramping up their use of technology, robotics, artificial intelligence, to ensure that remote auditing is, is very much possible. But inherently in the skill of an internal auditor is a risk assessment framework that they will be able to adopt to ensure that all risks that have been identified through the internal structures and risk assured are addressed and the weaknesses and deficiencies in the systems are, are identified. So internal auditors bring that unique skill and as, in, as part of the internal assurance framework together with the audit committees, they are able to support management to ensure that deficiencies are picked up in, a, in, in time, uh, being proactive as well and not reactive to the situation and ensure that we, we achieve our strategic objectives in addressing this worldwide pandemic. Yeah. Speaking of being proactive, I mean, in your assessment, do you think uh, departments, uh, government departments and entities are uh, looking at the future state of those organizations post COVID-19 or is their focus more on the immediate and responding to the needs and the relief that people need on the ground? Yeah, I think they, 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 there's a focus on both. I must definitely comment. I think a lot of uh, government institutions and private sector have done a lot of work 
in ensuring that we minimize the impact that could have been at the kind of work that has been done, not been done. But there is still a lot of room for thinking beyond COVID as the new norm, not just as an interim solution. So one of the things we are looking at is what happens if this goes on for another year or two years? You know, We cannot call it a, a temporary situation. An organization needs to start thinking about creating the new norm out of this disruption and saying, gone are the days where tenders needs to still be put into the tender box. What are we going to do in the next two years if we still rely on a tender box system? How are we going to make sure that uh, procurement doesn't have 100 pages of documents that are supporting it so that real-time auditing can be effective? So I think that is the part where maybe a lot of government and organizations have not co committed a lot of time in creating the new norm out of the current disruption. What do we mean? What are we talking about when we're talking about a COVID-19 urgent uh, uh, audit plan? Uh, wh what does that look like? What, what we're looking at, we say we, we need to be very responsive, but at the same time be very predictive and proactive. We, we need to be able to adjust to what is at hand, and we need to work together with management to ensure that our risk assessments are properly assured and we are identifying the right risks and we are becoming very targeted in our approach. One are the days where we can have standard templated audit procedures, uh, annual audit plans. We now have to be very agile, very responsive to what is the risk at hand and have the strategic objectives of the organizations in, in mind, not just implementing systems of, con in, of internal controls for the sake of it, but ensuring that implementing those systems of internal controls ends up delivering the right uh, goals of, of the organization in achieving their strategic plan. So now, that, that's how we have in, in, in being responsive as well and agile. Now, earlier on, you mentioned the adopting or adoption of technology as part of the new norm and the way of doing, of doing audits. What are some of the other added benefits of uh, uh, keeping track on those audits with technology? Yes, and, and I mean, technology firstly gives us the benefit of being able to have 100% testing of populations. When we don't use technology, we use a sampled methodology. And at this point, using technology, being able to leverage it allows us to test 100% of the population, which means every transaction, there could be systems that are embedded and plugins that are inspect, embedded into, into systems that will be able to do exception reporting in real time. And then the work of internal auditors and management becomes addressing the exceptions rather than uh, wasting a lot of time finding the exceptions. So that is one of the biggest benefits actually of leveraging technology. But also it's more about things uh, being predictive in our nature in that if we are able to predict what could happen next, that will give us a much better leverage over being responsive in time before things are happening rather than being reactive. How far are we from adopting things like uh, robotic processes and, uh, and uh, data analytics and the likes? I think there is a level of adoption, but it's still too scattered. It has not become a profession-wide adoption of this kind of models. And I think as the Institute, we have also identified that and we are partnering with relevant organizations as well, like the institutes that are dealing with IT auditors, and the institutes that are working with fraud examiners to start embedding those skills in the competency arsenal of an internal auditor so that we are able to be prepared to, to leverage technology in terms of analytics. We also have leaders, uh, most of them being banks, that have already started uh, leveraging robotics, artificial intelligence, and we are engaging them to bring that knowledge to the market so that other members can also learn from them and then we need to fast track this process so that it does no longer become an issue of the few that have adopted it, but it must become a pervasive adoption of technology and it must become the new norm in the internal auditing profession. Julius Mujapil, I appreciate your time, CEO of the Institute of Internal Auditors in South Africa. The news